In this video, I want to go through the Seneschal Construct, the Sorceress Enchantments, Skills, Gear, and Paragon you can use to play the Conjuration Sorceress in Diablo 4 Season 3. Kicking things off with the Seneschal Construct, I'm using Flash of Adrenaline and the Tempest Governing Stones. On Tempest, the setup is going to be Efficiency Support with Evernight and Burning. And the goal here is to consistently have plus 4 to all skills, while also getting the benefit of plus 15 to Critical Strike Chance and Burning Support. The burning is kind of nice because we're going to deal additional damage through our skill tree. Tempest is the go-to for me because it fires off really easily on any target in the game. Your Seneschal Construct's positioning, it fires a range attack, so it's always nice. But furthermore, it attacks every 1 second or less, in this case 0 0.8 seconds. And as things die, it spreads. So it's spreading the burn damage, it's continuously firing off every 0.8 seconds, which means we're going to enjoy plus 2 to all skills indefinitely, and we're also going to enjoy plus 15 critical strike chance. Flash of Adrenaline is that self-buff, so it's going to give us additional, in this case, 50% multiplicative damage. And how we get there is, yeah, it happens, uh, 1.5 seconds, this uh, their Seneschal Construct empowers our character, but then you're going to see that we improve this 12-second duration to 16 with duration support, and tactical support decreases the cooldown of Flash of Adrenaline, so it comes up even more. Finally, we wrap that up with Genesis, increasing the effectiveness of the supported skill, which is Flash of Adrenaline's ability to give us multiplicative damage by 150%, thus yielding... Right here, 50% multiplicative damage for 12 seconds, plus the 4 is 16 seconds. In a situation where you haven't been lucky enough to find Genesis yet, you can use Safeguard Support. It's going to give you 15% damage reduction for 3 seconds while you're under the benefit of Flash of Adrenaline. And if you don't have Evernight, you can also be using Swift Support. This allows Tempest to fire off and continuously give you that Critical Strike advantage and Burning Support, which helps the build just do damage and feel good. Let's check out the gear for the build. So from the top, Harlequin Crest Shaco, that's the helmet we want to use. It's just too damn good. We're also going to look for Raymond of the Infinite. It's almost required for like every Sork build. Ours is no different. We're going to be looking for the Serpentine legendary aspect on our gloves with the Bolt's Will for our pants. Our boots, I do prefer Ghost Walker aspect. It's just amazing for the build. And this one, as far as the build goes, is going to use a one hand and an offhand. On our one hand, we're going to use Conceited aspect. On our offhand, we're going to use Accelerating. The two rings we're going to use are going to be the ring for Tall Rosh's Iridescent Loop and the ring of Starless Skies. Finally, wrapping it all up, an Ancient Flame Legendary Aspect on the neck is what we're looking for. So if you're struggling to find some of these items for your build, I understand it can be tough. I got some options here for you. In the helmet slot, if you can't find the Harlequin Crest Shaco, look for the Audacity Legendary Aspect. Audacity is nice because it's going to give you the ability to stun everything near you, which is going to give you some additional survivability. It's hard to replace a helmet like Shaco, though. So get those runs in if you can, and fingers crossed that you hit it. On the chest, if you can't hit Raiment, again, it's very difficult to reproduce the effect that Raiment gives you to kind of suck everything in and stun it when you teleport. Go for the Juggernaut Legendary Aspect. It's a very amazing defensive skill. It's going to help you stay alive in tempestuous situations. For the leggings, if you can't get to Bolt's Will, you could absolutely try and get something like Disobedience to stack with your Juggernaut ability off your chest. If you have that, you're going to be armor capped, and you're going to be taking a lot less damage, and it's a good defensive option while you're just trying to navigate through content freely. I also understand that Starless Skies might be kind of tough, so go for the aspect of Elements. Elements is nice because it does last for 7 seconds on either element, and so with that, you're going to be doing a lot of good Hydra Fire-based damage, and then on the other 7 seconds, you're empowering your Frozen Orb damage. That's never a bad deal. And Tal Rosh's. Let's say you can't get Tal Rosh's off of Varshan. Look for the aspect of Control. Control is still very good, but it has a situational edge case where it only works against things that are mobilized, stunned, or frozen. And that doesn't really work on bosses. So you're not going to appreciate the multiplicative damage buckets that these two rings are going to give you or Tibbies. You are going to feel a lot less uh, powerful, but at least you have some power to navigate into 70 content freely and easily start leveling up those glyphs for yourself. Checking out our skill tree, we're going to put two points into Firebolt, one point into Frozen Orb, one point into Enhanced Frozen Orb, and one point into Greater Frozen Orb. Moving into our defensive skill tree, one point into Flame Shield, one point into Enhanced Flame Shield, and one point into Shimmering Flame Shield. We're then going to put one point into Teleport, one point into Enhanced Teleport, and one point into Shimmering Teleport. We do put one point into an Elemental Attunement, and we max out Glass Cannon. I'm getting two ranks from my chest, okay? That's Raymond of the Infinite. Then we're going to put one point into Frost Nova and one point into Enhanced Frost Nova. We are going to go down into our Conjuration Tree where we live. We're going to max out Hydra with one point into Enhanced Hydra and one point into Invoked Hydra. We are going to put three points into Ice Blades with one point into Enhanced Ice Blades and one point into Summoned Ice Blades. One point goes into Lightning Spear with one point into Enhanced Lightning Spear, and one point into Invoked Lightning Spear. We are going to max out Conjuration Mastery. Mine sends 6 out of 3 because I have it on my neck. I'm going to put one point into Align the Elements, which gives us access to max out protection with all three ranks. Moving into our Mastery Skills, we are going to put three points into Icy Veil, three points into Inner Flames, three points into Devouring Blaze, and just one point into Crippling Flames. 
moving down into our ultimate skill tree, one point into permafrost with three points into hoarfrost, and finally our key passives where we choose Esu's Ferocity. The enchantments that we're going to choose for the build are going to be at level 15, you want to go for Ice Blades Enchantment. For every 40 seconds and cooldowns you spend, you spawn Ice Blades on a random enemy. So what that does for us is we, spent, we press our skills like Teleport, we press Nova, we press Ice Blades, we press Flame Shield, we use Lightning Spear. Any of these skills will help to generate additional Ice Blades through this enchantment. And Ice Blades has its cooldown reduced by 0.5 seconds every time it hits a vulnerable enemy, which we make vulnerable all the time through Frozen Orb or through Frost Nova freezing things, then hitting them with Frozen Orbs, making them vulnerable, okay? Furthermore, our second choice is going to be Frozen Orb enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-basic skill, which is everything that we do, Frozen Orb has a 30% chance to launch an orb, a frozen orb, at nearby enemies. And when Frozen Orb's explosion hits, it has a 30% chance to make enemies hit vulnerable for two seconds. But Frozen Orb always makes frozen enemies vulnerable. So, as long as we have things Frost Nova'd, or things are frozen, bingo. We've got tons of benefit from Frozen Orb enchantment dealing tons more damage for us. And you'll really feel this when it's exploding all over the room. Let's dig into the Paragon board for the build. It got a bit of a facelift in Season 3 back from Season 1. We didn't have to rely on so many glyphs to get such multiplicative damage. A lot of the game changed, so let's check it out. The starting board are going to be using the Elementalist glyph. Dealing fire, cold, or lightning damage to an enemy increases all the damage we deal to them by 5% multiplicative for 10 seconds, stacking once each time per element. So basically, this is going to give us 15% multiplicative. In addition, we're going to gain some non-physical damage. Moving into our first connected board, it's going to end up being the Static Surge board. We are going to use the Conjure Glyph because Conjure gives us additional Conjuration damage, but also says that our Conjuration skills have 20% increased duration, which is really good for Ice Blades. The next board that we're going to be going into is going to be the Burning Instinct node, which we no longer take. In Season 1 we did, in Season 3 we don't go burning, so we're not taking that. The Glyph for this board is going to be Exploit. We deal additional vulnerable damage, and while we deal damage to vulnerable enemies, we increase our damage multiplicatively again up to 10% for 6 seconds. While we're here, we're going to grab the Cinder's Rare node, we're also going to grab Smoldering Embers. The next board that we're going to take, we do get the node Elemental Summoner. Your Conjuration skills have a 10% multiplicative reduced cooldown or mana cost. They also deal bonus damage equal to 5% multiplicative of the total amount of your bonus damage with Fire, Lightning, or Cold, which is currently, for me, 26%. The glyph on this board is going to be Control. We deal 86.1% to crowd-controlled enemies, but then we deal 10% multiplicative increased damage to things that are slowed or chilled, and 20% against things that are stunned or frozen, which is consistently happening with our Rain of the Infinite stuns from Teleport or our Frost Nova freeze. The next board we're going to go into is going to be the Frigid Fate node, which we also grab, and we're also enjoying a current 16% multiplicative bonus. We deal additional damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 10% of our total amount of our bonus damage to cold up to a max of 30. So the highest that goes to is 30, and so far we're at 16. The glyph on this board is going to be Tactician. We deal additional vulnerable damage, we have cold resistance and intelligence, and again, we deal 10% multiplicative damage for 4 seconds after using a defensive skill, which could be teleport, could also be something like flame shield. The next board we're going to move into is going to be the ceaseless conduit board, and the glyph here is destruction. We deal 99% critical strike increased damage, and critical strikes increase all the damage the enemy takes from us by 2% for 10 seconds up to 12% multiplicative. We absolutely want that. The next board we're going to go, go into is searing heat, where we don't take the node, Unfortunately, but we do get the glyph Pyromaniac. This gives us increased fire resistance and 18.7 fire damage. And every pyromancy skill you cast, or every second that you channel incinerate, increases your fire damage by 2% multiplicative for 6 seconds up to 10. So basically spamming Hydra, every time Hydra hits, that's how we get that damage up. Finally, we come to the last board, which is going to be our Enchantment Master. And unfortunately, we can't grab that either, but the glyph we're going to enjoy here is Flame Feeder. So we're going to deal 57.4% increased damage to burning enemies, which our Seneschal Constructs can assist us with, and then we deal 10% multiplicative increased direct damage to burning enemies. Very, very helpful for single target. So I'm going to show you how to play the build or how you kind of want to operate the build. Something you want to do is you're always taking a defensive stance. So let's assume that this is a boss or something, or maybe even like a huge elite or something, a butcher or something, right? Every time you're engaging in a situation, try to make sure that you're covering your butt. So the first thing you want to do, if possible, send out that Lightning Spear to make sure you can stun things, if possible. So Lightning Spear goes out, then you're going to drop your damage, which is Hydra's. Your Seneschal Construct is going to engage with Tempest, and immediately start giving you all that plus to skills, critical strike damage, and all that jazz. Once you've got these things set up this way, you're going to start throwing out these Ice Blades, okay? So Ice Blades is going to connect, and then as you use cooldowns, Ice Blades comes back up, right? It's connecting. And so you're constantly sizzling out all these additional 
summons or conjurations, right? And watch the cooldowns. You're always pressing cooldowns consistently. One thing you don't want to do, you see we're kind of pumping out these Hydras? We're getting that... We're looking at Ice Blades here. It's constantly coming up. You're always managing your Ice Blades, right? Get those Conjurations up as much as you can because this is your Conjuration Mastery. The higher that number, the more damage you deal. So you're always going to want to make sure that's around 5, 6, or 7 if possible, okay? If you've got that number, you're dealing great damage. Additionally, okay? One thing you don't want to do that I caught myself doing wrong all the time is you don't want to overlap your defensive cooldown. So, again, you're always covering your butt, right? You're going into the room, you drop out some stun, you drop some Hydras, they'll tell you where the threat is. Drop some uh, Ice Blades down. And then you go like this. You can teleport, and then you can, like, stun. Because remember, you teleport in, Rainman's going to stun that target for whatever that duration is. For me, it's 2.5 seconds. So I come in here, he's stunned, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, then I freeze. He's still CC'd, then I toss on my shield, so he can't even do damage to me. By the time that's done, teleport's pretty much back up ready to go with another stun behind. Eventually, these targets are going to become unstoppable, because unfortunately, you can't keep things crowd-controlled forever in Diablo 4. So that's where you want to manage your flame shield usage. You might go in with, like, Hydras with a bit of a stun, stun again, right? Not overlapping too, too much, just pumping Hydras for that damage. Bang, then you freeze, right? Conjuration's coming up. Oh, hey, he's unstoppable. Bang. Then we get our flame shield up and we move, right? And we move. You're always playing defensively with this build, and that's how you can get away with, like, murder, not being armor capped and not even being capped on your resistances with the character. That's what you're looking to do. And if you get this lean and feeling nice, the game is just buttery smooth. When you're actually casting Hydra with this build, don't be afraid to just full send it and like just keep clicking it. It's it's totally fine to do that. That's not a problem. But I want you to watch the rate at which a Hydra fires, okay? So you put the Hydra head down, right? It shoots the bolts. It shoots the bolts, right? So what you're trying to do is, is play like this. Hydra, Hydra. They shoot, they shoot. Hydra, Hydra. They shoot, they shoot. You're constantly reproducing this three bolt or four bolt shot from your Hydra heads, okay? You see, that's what you're kind of going for. You're constantly... Always putting that Hydra pressure down. You look at all these frozen orbs coming out, right? And so when you really start getting into it, Hydra, Hydra, you just get into this rhythm, right? Hydra, Hydra goes, Ice Blades come down, Bolt comes out, Hydra, Hydra, right? Big Telestomp, Hydra, Hydra, bang, Hydra, Hydra, bang. And that's kind of what you're doing. That's how you play it. That's how you get that offensive DPS out there. Just weave in Hydra with all your other conjurations whenever they come up. If you're looking for additional player power, the elixir that I use for the build is going to be the Heady Assault Elixir. It does increase our attack speed by 20%, so that really helps. Remember that a lot of your Hydra damage is going to come from attack speed. The more attack speed you have, the better this build feels, so you really do want to maintain that. At the time of making this video, I'm going to go over some stats for you. I currently have 70 on my Lightning, Fire, and Cold, and I'm not even capped on Poison and Shadow, and the build doesn't need to be. That's kind of disgusting. We currently have 5,000 armor. Remember that around 13,400 is the cap in Diablo 4 for tier 100 content, and we don't even care. We're at 5,000 and 13,000 life, and we still get through the content just fine. Let's have a look. Our attack speed bonus is currently 20%, but once our Esus gets engaged, it goes up. And again, you can magnify this with using a Heady Assault Elixir. A critical strike chance is about 35%. Our critical strike damage is 284%. And just kind of navigating through, you can see some of these stats. Damage of Conjurations at 233 Fantastic. We do do additional damage while we're close, by the way, so if you can stand next to things, you are going to deal a little bit more damage than you would being distant, obviously. Uh, finally, having a look down here, all of our damage reduction is currently 20%. Our damage reduction from elites is 40. And uh, yeah, damage reduction from burning, 27.2. This is the stats of the character I got so far. And our lucky hit is currently 55.2%. wanted to show that. And uh, that's it, boys. Our cooldown is 40.5 at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the Diablo 4 Season 3 Conjuration Sork. I know it was a fan favorite. Happy to bring it back and put the work in to make it possible. I am going to leave some gameplay video here for you guys to enjoy. Just throwing bosses on the floor and just doing some Tier 100 Vault Completions and Nightmare Dungeon Completions for you. So you can see how the build actually performs in the highest content in the game. How will this do in the gauntlet? Is this good for leaderboards? We'll have to wait and see what that looks like. But I'm excited and optimistic to see what this thing can do. It moves so fast. It's a, it's a breeze to play, and I hope you love it. Thanks for checking out today's video. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to make these. I'll catch you guys on the next one.
Greetings. <laughs>